Hello, and welcome to Under 1000. My name's Thomas Flower, and each episode I'll read you a piece of super short fiction. All of the stories are 1,000 words or less. Today, I'll be reading Buried Inside. Hey, are you going to be in or around Glasgow on the 5th of December? I'm hosting a queer flash fiction open mic night at Categoria's Books from 7pm. Check out the Under 1000 Facebook page for more details, and come join us if you can. It should be a lot of fun. Please be aware that this episode deals with themes of body horror and contains descriptions of surgery. So if that's likely to upset you or anyone that you're listening with, then you might want to skip this one. I can't shake the feeling. I can't wash it off. She's still there, lurking within, taunting me from my own body like somebody buried inside of me. Why can I hear her heart beating? It's my heart now. What right does she have to make it pulse and pump? How can she control it all? The veins, intestines, nerves. They were all bought and sold. I'm the legal owner, but it seems she is still the one they answer to. Here we are, sharing this body somehow. They told me I was to be transferred only a week or so ago. My previous body was dying. It was time to move on to a new home. Of course, the procedure was experimental. Not one that had been tried on any other human before, they told me. It had been seen to work in mice and in monkeys, and so I was the final step in completing the scientific process. They had developed a way to transfer the brain, you see hack it out of my old drying skull and slop the contents neatly inside a vessel. With a little stitching and a little time, I would be up and active again, ready to take on the world from behind a new pair of eyes. That's what they told me, anyway. I only learned a little about her, the day before the procedure was to begin. They needed a body which had been donated in full to science. They couldn't be Frankensteining together bits and pieces to make the new me possible. They had to find a carcass already willingly waiting to be filled. It was hers that they found. She was young. Died tragically, but peacefully. Of course a young one was necessary. Why hop ship from one rotting vessel to another? I needed a fresh start, to get back my youth and live it all over again. And now, here she is stuck with me, in here. I can't hear her. The brain is gone, and I'm in charge at least in theory, but I know she's still in there. When they brought the body back, they must have sucked her soul straight out of heaven and dropped it right back onto this mortal coil. Of course, they'd probably say I was being paranoid. A few would call me a senile fool behind my back. But I know what I'm feeling. Despite the scientific and theoretical impossibility, the old resident of this rented space has returned to haunt me. Of course, some others might think I got what was coming to me. While the scientists and their ilk never fail to remind me that there's no such thing as a soul, the religious lot are banging on about how my procedure is an abomination unto God. Maybe they're right. Perhaps, if there is a God... The sly old trickster is punishing me for the very vanity of refusing to die. If I would not go willingly into the grave, then some archangel up there must have decided that my second life would be a sad and sorry one, with the never-ending reminder of what was done to keep me on this earth. And still, here she is. She prickles my skin, her skin, our skin, makes me feel overwhelmed with disgust at this fleshy prison I have locked myself inside of. It's not my body, and it never was. Though the thoughts and actions may be mine to control, the very basest of processes and emotions remain hers, and she will toy with me through them until she can return this corpse to the slab once again. She wants me dead, I'm sure of it. I think, if I can't calm myself, they'll have me locked away soon, Although I haven't told them just what I'm thinking and feeling since rising from the operating table, I know they can see the fear and dread splashed across her face. 
Her pretty lips and eyes and cheeks are snarled into a fearful scowl over the terror of what I have made myself into. Soon I will be labelled with some paranoid psychosis and locked away for recovery. Of course the public will be told a different story. A high-profile case like mine must be seen to be a success for these people at all cost. I'm sure I'll be resting or spending time with family or some such bilge. But I fear that inside the padded cell I will have nothing to distract me from the cruel and simple methods she uses to torture me from within myself day and night. Perhaps this was all a mistake. Maybe I should not just welcome death, but choose to embrace it now, as soon as possible. It must be a sign, after all, that there are limits to the ways in which human life can be extended, and that some things are beyond the pale. I had thought that it was my right to buy another body and live within it for as long as I wanted. Now, the universe is conspiring with the former occupant to tell me otherwise. But I'll cling on for as long as I can. Why spend all that money and have the endless rounds of surgeries and checkups, if not to live it up while I still may? She might be the world's worst backseat driver, but I'm the one taking this body for a spin. Perhaps a final night of sweet wine and excess and hedonous debauchery. I'll make her love me for the way this body feels. We'll go out singing together. Settle the spirit. Bury the body. She's haunting me from within. And this is my way out. Thank you for listening to Under 1000. I'm your host, Thomas Flower. To follow the show online, look for Under 1000 Pod on Twitter or Facebook. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash under1000pod where you can sign up to read each month's stories in advance, as well as to have a thank you be read during these credits. The theme music is an instrumental version of In Between Days by Nick Tate and the Sharks. To hear the full song and more from the same EP, go to Nick Tate, N-I-C-T-A-T-E, and the Sharks.bandcamp.com, or search for them on your favourite streaming platform. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and that you'll join me again next time for some more super short fiction.